Welcome back to the channel everybody. Today we have a little RV upgrade on the 2019 Keystone Avalanche. We're going to be changing the thermostat. I'll show you guys here in a moment. I have the Coleman Mach thermostat right now, you know, Coleman Mach air conditioners. So we're just going to try to upgrade that. These older thermostats have a pretty weird range and temperature. They don't always activate when they should or stop when they should. So we're going to be upgrading it. There are a lot of RV upgrade thermostats but they're not that great so we talked to a tech and they said hey you can just put a regular house one in there uh you know nothing fancy just head to walmart pick one of these up i got this off amazon 25 dollars. this is a honeywell rth 2300b programmable thermostat by the two-day running schedule so we're gonna wire this bad boy in i'll show you guys the old one and uh hopefully everything works smoothly and this is a pretty cheap upgrade you can do to your RV. And trust me, it's going to be a lot better for you guys to actually have the analog thermostat. They're horrible. I mean, they get the job done, but not great. So let's jump to that old thermostat, take a quick look, and we'll unbox this and show you what we got. So here's more of a quick close-up on the actual thermostat we're going to be installing. So you guys can just take a quick look if you'd like. Pause any part in the video, and you can take a quick look at some of these features if this is one that you're going to want to do. And now we'll get to unboxing. Opening up the box, we have instruction manuals. Let me get this because it's fall right an angle here. We have some stickers to label the wires. Um, just a bunch of stuff. Yep, no mercury. Awesome. Then we have the unit here. And I think, let me reach in here. We do have some things to anchor the base plate on. So if, you, if your stuff doesn't line up, more than welcome to use that. So this is the unit itself. I kind of like this one because you did have the physical buttons for the fan on, heat and cool. I did like the traditional buttons like that, but actually having a digital display is going to be a lot better. So here's this. I'm going to pause the video here for a quick second, take this back plate off because it's just, it's a little bit harder than they say it is. They just tell you, pull here. Trust me, it's takes a little bit more. I just probably like a little butter knife in there really gently and it opens up. Then I can show you guys the back of the wiring. So I separated the backing plate from the actual thermostat unit. This unit does take batteries. I'm pretty sure this is one of the only reasons why you can put a house one in here, just because it can be battery operated and not run off a 12 volt because house isn't 12. So this is the backing plate here and you'll see all the wiring. Uh, it is labeled B-O-G-Y-W, not used RRC. Uh, the RRC does have a jumper across from it, something to note. Um, but all these are kind of labeled, so, you know, black, white, green, yellow, R, for, you know, red. So we have a whole bunch of different options here. I think we're honestly probably only going to be using the red, the white, the yellow, and then probably green. I think that will be the high speed. Uh, the blue I don't think we're going to need because from what I understand and have seen, the blue is the negative for the 12 volt, but since we're going to be using batteries, we don't really need that, so... Um, if I'm incorrect, you know, feel free to comment down below, but just what my understanding is. So let's, uh, get to uninstalling the old thermostat. So here we have the Coleman Mach traditional analog, uh, thermostat. As you guys see here, we have range 55 to 90. I mean, that's, I guess, okay in this application. Uh, we have cool fan off heat, uh, fan high low. That's something you're going to have to consider here because a lot of these house thermostats only have one fan speed, which would just be high. So there's some alternatives we could do. We'll, we'll get there. I'll just take this cover off. I already loosened it. Um, so as you see here, each RV will be a little bit different. But this is a six-wire setup. Uh, these are the color wires that I have. Yours might vary a little bit, but we got red, yellow, white, gray, green, and blue. When we hook this up to the new thermostat, when I show you guys, we're not going to be using all of these wires. So just don't get overwhelmed when you go, oh god, there's six wires. Uh, the only reason I have six right now is I do have heating and AC. If your unit only has heat, this should be a really simple change for you. So uh, that's something to consider. So uh, we'll get to taking this off the wall. Um, I'm pretty sure these wires are soldered on here, so we're probably just going to have to snip them. And we'll probably use those wires still because I'm pretty sure the ones inside of here are going to be wire tied into some weird color wires. Because with RVs, you know, they like to mix it up. 
So to get started, we have a Phillips screwdriver. This is the point in the video where I'd recommend you guys shut off the power to your unit and uh, probably the negative battery terminal so you have no power to your RV. Uh, in full disclosure, I just shut off the air conditioning breakers because I, I kind of want to test to see like fans and stuff. I don't want all the power off. You know, just be careful. You don't want to fry anything. So only do it if you generally know what you're doing, I guess. So I'm just going to unscrew this off of here and then I'll get back to you guys because you know, I need two hands so so for this specific one I had two screw holes left and right which take off the board it kind of clips out uh, I just have one holding on the actual bracket right now so I'm just gonna keep the bracket out pull this out as I said just careful not to touch anything if you do have power going to it uh, yeah these wires are totally long enough to keep using so pretty much what I'm going to do here is make sure everything is labeled. I'll probably snag a quick picture on my phone so I have this. And then I'm going to cut these wires, strip them, so that way I can have them screw into the next one because these ones are in fact soldered onto this board. So not really much I can do there. So uh, let's get snipping. So we have the old thermostat off the wall. As you see here, I cut the wires. I had quite a bit of length, so that's why I did it that far. In case I ever wanted to put this one back on instead of having to re-solder, you know, you could get all crafty and connect the wires again. That's up to you, uh, and depending how much space you have. So this one's off the wall. And now that we have that one off the wall, I have all the wires snipped. And I cut just a little bit off so I can insert it into the new thermostat. So I cut off the white, the red, the yellow, and the green because I'm very, very confident the green is the high fan speed. Not 100% sure, but I mean, we'll find out. Uh, we're not going to need the blue and we're not going to need the gray. So I'll probably end up just black taping the ends of those or, you know, just I don't need them. So I'm just going to install the wires into the new thermostat base, uh, which I'll show you guys once that's wired in and kind of give you guys a close up of what I did. Before we proceed, I did want to mention, if you guys are interested in having a high and low fan speed setting, it's as simple as getting an on and on switch and then wiring one side of the switch with the green and one side of the switch with the gray. And then you would just wire that switch into where you'll see me put the green wire and then that will allow you to use that little switch on the side if you install it to the side of the thermostat or underneath it to be able to switch from high to low fan speed. So that's always an option. It'll only cost you a few bucks more, but if having the high and low is important to you, that is something to consider. So here I have it wired. I left the gray and the blue on the back side. I'm just going to give it a quick test before I actually tether this to the wall, make sure everything's all working good, make sure that my fan speed guess was right, being the green being high. So this is what it looks like right now as a close-up for you guys. So you see I have the green, which is the fan, yellow, white, and then I have R into red. Uh, it says to keep the jumper in there if you uh, don't have an R and an RC. So I just put it into the R where it belongs, tightened everything up. So now I'm going to put some uh, AAA batteries in the thermostat and make sure, I think it says it on here. One second, I'll show you guys. On the back of the thermos, it says you want to set whether you're gas or oil or electric and heat pump. I'm just going to keep it on gas because we use propane in here and we're all set so we took care of the gray and the blue wire closed those off and just shoved them back in there a little bit but they are accessible where if i ever needed to install the old one i could pull it out and not have to dig behind the wall like a crazy man so i did mount the backing plate i have all this set up uh, we should be good to go um pretty much all we have to do now is put on the face of this thermostat and uh give her a go so fingers crossed all right, so we have the breakers on, our face plates on. I took the liberty of setting the time. And as you see, yes, that is the real temperature. It's 81 degrees. I am sweating. But for testing sake, we are going to just flip over onto the heat. Oh, am I where I need to be? Oh, I'm not even going to come remotely close. Well, let's set the heat to 83, I guess. And I heard the click, heat turned on. I'm just gonna let the blower actually fire up so I can actually hear it. Well, I guess I should say the heat. I should hear it in a second. There you go, I just heard it kick on fully. So we have heat, so that's going good. I'm just gonna shut this off. 
Actually, I'll decrease it so it shuts it off first. That'll set, should hear a click to let me know it's shut. Yep, there you go. I just heard the heat shut off. So now that blower will just run for a minute. Once that's done and shuts off, I'll do the cool test for you guys so you can hear the AC as well. All right, now that we have, I'll shut the heat to off now. Boop, there we go. Bam. All right, um, I'm gonna drop the temperature down to turn on the AC. It's 81 in here. What is, oh, cause I don't have cool on. I'm such a silly. All right, I'm just gonna go to the cool. That turned the AC on, uh, AC on immediately and it's on the high speed. So this has been a success. Um, you can, let me see here, 75, yeah, 75 is an okay temperature. Now just drop it five degrees, we'll let it shut off. Um, I did notice here, just to tell you guys, when I did flip it to cool like this and then immediately shut it off, if you tried to put it on to cool again within like a minute, it wouldn't turn on and the cool on thing will flash. It kind of works almost like a furnace, if you will. So like once it shuts off, it lets the blower run for like a few minutes to make sure everything's cleared out. So it must think the same thing with the air conditioning. So for that reason, if you just flip it to cool, shut it off and flip it back over, your AC is not gonna immediately start. So if you guys run into that, that is the problem. You just wait a few more minutes and then you'll be able to just switch it on to cool without a problem. So that has been the install looks beautiful was able to get this done with a straight blade a phillips some side dikes and a little bit of electrical tape of course you can do it better than the electrical tape uh if you want for those wires that we didn't use but that is completely up to you well everybody that wraps up the install of the honeywell home rv thermostat uh we were able to replace the analog in the 2019 keystone avalanche in about 15 minutes maybe uh, if you're really comfortable I mean it's a really quick change I do want to have a little disclaimer to you guys if you are doing this and you're unfamiliar or uncomfortable doing it please make sure you shut the power off to your RV and unplug the battery so you just don't mess anything up if you're a little bit more advanced or comfortable doing it uh, something as simple as like what I did just shutting off the ACs made me comfortable enough to actually make it just as a side note if you are just shutting off the AC power and not shutting off the power to the RV. When you're snipping the wires off your old thermostat, don't snip them all at the same time. Just think it's just not gonna be good. So just one at a time, you shouldn't have a problem. The wires all can be sep separated from each other. They're not gonna touch. And if you wanted to test as well, once the wires are actually out like that, you could touch like the red to the green to actually see the fan speed to make sure everything's working the way it wants. But I highly recommend just shutting off the power. Super simple. I just needed some lights for videos too, so. You know, I mean, I have some sun, but needed more light. Another thing I want to mention, this thermostat does not include batteries. If you're like me and tend not to read the box, I didn't know. So before you install, make sure you have two AAA batteries. Uh, thankfully, I had the old trusty fire stick remote, so I just loaned some batteries from that for now until I run to the store. So, you know, just a side note. So I have one more thermostat to change in this RV in the bedroom. I'll have to think on that one because that one is just a AC thermostat. It's not hot and cold so we'll see what we're gonna do with that so if you guys found this video useful helpful you liked it be sure to smash the like button we much appreciate your guys support if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button and hit that bell notification to be notified of all our upcoming videos I think that pretty much sums it up if you guys have any questions comments on what we did here today or about the channel if you guys have any critiques or anything you want to see in upcoming videos just drop them down below we get to every comment uh, we'll help you the best that we can so good uh, i think that pretty much wraps this up so what does the old man say um until next time try something new do a little bit of everything Okay.